pretty divisive debate there and it'll have a way to go in New South Wales. Uh, let's return to what's been happening federally and bring in our panel, Ben Oakwist and Dave Gazzard. Good to see you both. Thanks for joining us. Hey, David. Good day, David. Energy policy, I feel like we've uh, debated this more than anything else over the last decade or so, but here we are again today talking about gas uh, in particular. And the government now talking about gas reservation. Uh, it's going to uh, work towards a gas reservation policy, but it'll take a couple of years before they actually land on a policy. Just, Dave Gazard, give us a sense of the government's thinking here, because it's, it's been quite a transformation from saying, no, 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 this sort of government intervention is a terrible idea, and, you know, as the industry says, we'll spook investors. Mm. Why now a different approach? I think you're seeing a, a re-elected, reinvigorated Morrison government mm. being able to cast his own leadership decisions over a contentious debate and actually get into it for the first real time. And Paul um, Kelly made the point earlier, he's not uh, afraid to do a bit of market intervention. He, he, he is a pragmatist, first and foremost, and he understands that y you can have an ideological debate over this, over, you know, control and supply and so on. Government intervention. But, but at, at the same point, people want cheaper power prices. That, and that is really, really motivating people. people pe um, cheaper power yeah. prices. Gas is critical in that, in that it comes in at the last stage of production of, of electricity. Yeah. So when, when you've got high demand and a really high gas price, you just have really, really out there power prices, mm -hmm. right? So that is priority number one for him. I, I think, you know, it, it is a recognition that power is regulated as a state level. And so any time these states have gone way out and done all their own things, but when it fails, they say, oh, we've got no national energy strategy. So he knows it is going to come to him to visit him at some point anyway. And the, the states will all put the fingers at the feds and say, it's your fault, no national... So he's gone, OK, fine, let's do it. Let's get into it now. What do you think, Ben, of the idea of gas reservation? And just to explain to people, that's saying, you know, we've got all this gas in the ground, we're going to keep as much as we want here in Australia, and the rest we'll, we'll sell off. Well, the... The government hasn't announced that. I think the gas reservation plan that they've announced today is a total con. It's a gas reservation policy for new wells only. Now, yeah, the problem yeah, with it that... It doesn't apply to existing That's projects. where the expensive gas is. It, that, it's actually a recipe for locking in expensive gas. If you were serious about reducing the price of gas, you'd be, uh, you'd be saying, well, we'll have a reservation policy for the cheap gas that's coming out of the Cooper Basin and the Bass Strait. These new fields, it's going to be more expensive. So actually what you're saying is that we'll keep exporting the stuff overseas cheaply, and the domestic market can have a reserve of the expensive stuff. The reality well, it's is an we... interesting point, actually. It's an interesting point because, uh, yeah, the cheap stuff's already being drilled. And, and, and it's going overseas. We, we, we don't have a supply problem. We, we have tripled supply since 2014, tripled. And I, I think it's a bit rich of the minister to now go around to the states and say it's, it's on you because sometimes because of the pressure from the National Party, sometimes the pressure because of the pressure for farmers, you have a moratorium in place because it's unpopular and people think it's dangerous and it's destroying farmland. To put it on them when we have tripled, and I say tripled, the supply of gas well, in Australia I mean, since 2014. Dan Andrews in Victoria says they're producing twice as much gas as they're using in Victoria, so, you know, hello. They're, yeah. they're already doing... Dan Andrews is, is, is looking at building a jetty to import gas. Mm. There is gas in his state which is locked up and he's putting a facility in to bring in gas from elsewhere. That's how mad the situation is. Yeah, but it's a good you've got, you, to Queensland. You, you've, got, you've got all this gas in the ground that has been locked up, which we've got more gas than Qatar in the Middle East. So what, what fields be, are we talking about here? We, do, we do have more Let's just get clear what we're talking about. The, the new fields, because this yep. would only apply to new fields. Yep. There's the Beetaloo Basin, yep. right, in the Northern Territory. There's Narrabri in New South There's Wales. There's Narrabri in northwest New South Wales. And in Victoria, we're talking about onshore or offshore? The, uh, onshore, um, because there's stuff already coming out of the Bass Strait, but some of that is going to Queensland. The problem is we built those big terminals in Gladstone and there's a voracious appetite to send it offshore. And that'll we, have, keep we, going we, no matter we, what. You're right, we do have as much as Qatar, but we're exporting <coughs> it. We're not, we're not using it. Now, a lot of the gas in Victoria, something like a third of it, gets used for domestic heating. Now, that's an expensive solution. It's now cheaper for customers in Victoria to put in efficient reverse cycle air conditioners that give you both heating and cooling and you pay a cheaper price. Now locking in gas is actually locking in higher, higher power prices for those consumers. Gas is not a long-term solution anymore. The days of cheap gas have gone. 
we're exporting the cheap stuff. It's only the expensive stuff left. And 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 I think the government uh, is putting a con on everybody by saying there's a reservation well, okay, policy when there's not. What do you say to that? that these new fields, if they're developed, uh, are going to be the more expensive gas. Let's What's not, the point let's, of reserving let, that? Let's not reinvent market economics here on the program. The more supply you have, the cheaper it's going to be. But, um, Let, let's look at the stuff that's Ben's contracted, right? right? There's, the, the there's, very gas, today. there's gas that's contracted. Yeah. To, oh, and what, are you going to go back and rip up every contract? That's the point. The, the other thing the government announced today, which I thought was really interesting along with this, was an ACCC review into the whole pipeline network. Governing sure, and gas that's supply. important too. Absolutely, because but just to be clear, this is, the current, this is one of the, the things that drives fields, our price. This, there's no way the government's going to reserve gas from the current... I think it's really yeah. difficult. I mean, there's intervention in the market and then there's completely overturning yeah. every contractual obligation for shippers and suppliers here now. So that cheap so, gas is going to keep going uh, offshore? It, I, look, short of ripping and tearing every contract up, it's really hard to do that, but right? We, we, I mean, there's an interventionist side to this, but yeah. it is to fix, you know, a whole mishmash of interventionist stuff that's happened at the States for a long time, including locking up supply. But... but uh, I went back and read an Australia Institute report from 2013, cooking up a price rise. And but we, that's, that's your we, we, report. We, we warned, you would say that. We warned exactly what would happen when you built those massive export uh, terminals. The price would go up to export parity. That's happened. The cheap gas from the Bass Strait and the Cooper Basin is being sent out there. We've tripled the supply. We don't have a supply problem. So you're wrong to suggest that increasing supply will reduce prices when we've got these massive exports going out, the cheap gas is going overseas, and now we're talking about reserving some of the expensive stuff for Australia. The days of cheap gas are gone. We need an energy policy to get us off gas, not on gas. OK, so that's, that's where you're, you're suggesting renewables... Well, in Victoria, it's been proven that, as I said, for domestic use, it's a, it's a big cost for consumers for heating, and, and it's cheaper to get yourself on an efficient reverse cycle air conditioner than, than using current gas. And then if you got those, yeah, if those you people off that gas... If you wanted to free some of that stuff for industry, that's a good idea. Right. If you're going to bring it in from Queensland, of course it's going to be expensive, right? This is part of the problem. If you're taking it from your domestic situation, it's going to be cheaper. It's, it's cheaper than oil. It's, it's cleaner than oil. This is, is. a solution, right? Not it's got to be part of the not energy. Not as cheap mix. as renewables and not as clean. Well, that's what's what got us into the problem. That's what's what got us into, into trouble. Power. It's so expensive and it's 15 years away and it's uninsurable. But apart from that, I, all I, good. Look, I, <laughs> if it was if it was achievable, I'd be supportive, right? It's actually, you know, it's quite expensive. It's expensive. It's got a long tail, and every green group would make sure this never happened into the next century. But so be pragmatic about it, right? Renewables are cheap. Storage is coming down in price. Demand response, demand management. We can have it all. And we've got more and renewables, and our power price. price is higher than ever. How does that work? Uh, because gas is so expensive. That's been one of the big driving <laughs> it's not forces. Not because of gas. It's, 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 it's a key factor in higher power prices. I am sorry. Because the more we renewables, it, the and, less reliability. And the more time you have no wind and no sun and, and yet and, and, and no coal... Gas. And expensive gas. ..you are going to have very expensive power prices. Because this is what gas. has got us to this point now. But is, are you saying, Ben, if we hmm. took gas out of the market... I think over time... ..that renewables uh, would be cheaper? Uh, well, uh, over time, we are going to get to a fossil fuel electricity grid. We are going to have to get to net zero emissions. And renewables is coming down in price all the time. And guess what? Gas keeps going up in price all the time. So what does that tell you? Get with the strength, get with the man management, renewables and storage, and you can have cheaper power. You, you can get coal out, right, which is where we've gone, right? Rightly or wrongly, it's really tough to get coal. Gas is an immediate, Expensive. available, cheaper, if you, can, if you can get it reliable, and cleaner, importantly, right? This is what has delivered the US energy self-sufficiency. Emissions reduction as well. Only and one... emissions reduction. It's... It's a fossil fuel, so Ben will go to his grave fighting it. No, no, right? that's, only one that, thing that's a fact of life. There's only one thing more expensive than gas in Australia, that's nuclear. Coal is cheaper, renewables are cheaper. If Coal we, is dirtier. If we had, yeah, absolutely. If we but, had a decent network cheaper. of pipelines, which is under review, and a greater supply of gas... I, we've, we've tripled the supply and the gas price is still high. And we've got a lot of it contracted going offshore. So you've got all these it, forces... it in Australia? Well, but we're not reserving it. We're only reserving a plan to reserve new fields. None it, of it, the is, cheap stuff. it is interesting. None of the cheap I mean, stuff. The, okay. I, I've talked to Alan Carpenter about this, who was the Premier when the, did the reservation. Yeah. And it, that has led to a lower price in. in yeah. So it completely ne negates Ben's so argument. They did that, they did it that has been. Correct. Yeah. It, it has been. All right. Look, 
There was a lot of other things we were going to talk about, but we're, you know, energy <laughs> policy, once you get us going... Take us to the, the happy fun. place. All right, we better go. <laughs> <laughs> ben O'Quist, Dave Gazzard, thank you. We'll catch up again soon. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back for the last word.